Good evening. This is Ken at Tortoise Capital. This is the multi time frame, multi lens analysis of SPY uh, conducted at the uh, live trading and research weekend in Kansas City on um, July 14th, 2019. So we're starting off with a clean sheet and the S&P on monthly charts. And so the first thing that I'm going to look at. And so what we're going to do is apply a systematic discipline process uh, to look at the S&P across multiple time frames from monthly to 30 minute charts. And we're going to apply these lenses, the MACD histogram, pinch and stretch technique, the RLCO Bollinger Band framework, the regression line fractal framework, and then uh, support and resistance. So we're going to start with the monthly and work through these in sequence and then summarize our monthly assessment in this notes box. Then we'll do the same th for weekly, daily, two hour and 30 minute. And on each time frame, we're adding uh, red lines for uh, resistance or areas in which if it breaks, um, we might be adding positions or expect others to be adding positions. And then green lines for areas where if price moves through to the north, we'd be looking at adding positions or think that people would be adding positions. And then that will, we will summarize that uh, in a notes section at the bottom and then keep adding to that chart, building out weekly, daily, two hour and 30 minute views. And then if we wanted to, as we read across, we might make some notes about MACD as an approach uh, and so on in those, those um, integrating boxes at the end of the columns and the rows. And so in that way, we will be seeing both sides of the trade um, and get, in a, get in a, um, um, an idea of what other traders and their time frames are considering. Uh, and that will set us up for a good understanding of the market and then we apply this to sectors and individual targets to set up our daily trading plans. Um, when we do this, uh, this can actually last for weeks and months at a time when the markets are in trading ranges, especially at the monthly level. And it um, has a payoff uh, for the future. Uh, so taking a look at the S&P, the first thing I'm looking at is MACD histogram. So I'm going to classify the MACD season and look at the location of the signal line with respect to the Bollinger Band River uh, and see what we, we may see. So I notice that right now we are above the zero line and that means we have a long side bias. But I notice that the slope is downward. So we are in the fall and we've been in the fall from about um, September of uh, 2018 to the present. So the easy bull market that ran from 200 to 290 uh, ended. And then this was, you may recall, the pain of the last October, November, December and the harsh sell-off. Well, we've climbed out of that hole, but the easy days of that long, beautiful Trump anomaly uh, was the summer. Um, and then there was a period of fall the recovery kept it from going into winter, but we still are just breaking out of a new high now. So even though this is a bull market and we are above the dragon, um, we are mindful that uh, in the fall, uh, we should be careful about preserving those profits, especially on a move from 240 to 300 near an all-time high. Um, we need to be mindful of those profits. So that means I'm, I'm looking now... Um, I should buy any breakout above 300.65 because there's no resistance overhead. So that's just open and free and clear. So the areas where I might uh, um, be looking at adding, I would, I would just add automatically a position at about 301-ish on a monthly trade. And then places that I would look at protecting might be the 90 period regression line. So at 288, so I'm going to turn that red. And I'm going to make that the default because it's saved me some clicks later. So I would put it at, I think, the, um, the middle of the dragon, the southern skin of the dragon, the Bollinger Band mean. That would be a logical target on the downside. 
So I'm actually going to make that purple and say that is a significant profit target. So any short position uh, could use 265 as a long-term swing short, and that would be a place of real decision if it gets to the um, uh, Bollinger Band mean. Then I would say the Z minus 1, the PSR stop, Z minus 2, and then the long-term um, buy and hold position, which is the RL270. So each of those red lines now represents a price target on the way down and a place where logically I would understand that as a support level. So if it found support, it wouldn't surprise me, and I would consider that to be the end of a swing. So uh, if this fails, on a, I would see the monthly guys uh, looking to get short uh, somewhere around uh, 288. So I would take this um, to be the yellow zone. So now the, actually, I'm going to put this as the monthly trading range is right here. I'm actually going to go at, at, a, at a monthly low. Is it about 291? So that's the first place that I think a monthly trader would be persuaded to go short. So if this thing sold off from 300 and then went through 290, I think we would, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw monthly traders adding to short positions. So that $10 move from 300 is a 3.5%. A 3.5% decline might trigger monthly guys to preserve their position to get out of it or even to add to the short side. Um, so that's what I see as a result of the MACD histogram. So we're in the fall. I want to be careful about where I would preserve my profits and I have some as a result of this move from 240 to 300. So um, I've accounted for that uh, and I've shown where I want to add a position. Um, let's see. Maybe I would add not sooner than here if it moved to 310. So a 3.5% move to the upside. On a monthly basis, that's where I would add a position. Okay, so next I'm going to look at uh, pinch and stretch conditions, looking for extreme conditions. So here I'm looking at the, um, at the width of the river and the uh, the uh, width of the Bollinger Bands. This is still a very wide river. I don't see anything there. The Dragon is starting to get wide, so this is not a pinch. It's the opposite of pinch. We saw from the um, the daily report uh, on the week and the weekend report that the river was actually getting starting to get wide. Um, I don't see anything special on pinch and stretch here. Um, we're um, so nothing to add there. Uh, for RLCO framework, I want to describe the price action in terms of the P1 through P7 patterns. I'm going to look for things also like owls, hybrid frogs, collapsing or emerging dragons, or Z3Ps. So really, uh, what I have here, the last thing that I saw was a strong move that got to Z2, right about where the cursor is. It pulled back and found support at the Bollinger Band main and then continued and it left the river right about here at 283. And the RL30 is out of the river. Still, it never even went back into the river. So we have price, the RL10 and the RL30 all outside of the river. That means we are in well into trending behavior to the upside. So this is, if anything, a P4 continuation pattern and we're at all-time highs. So um, those standard first and second generation RLCO patterns don't apply, but we are in a strong trend up and so adding positions uh, based on new highs already covers us there, so nothing additional to add. Um, next, RLFF, looking at the dynamic relationship between the RL10 and the RL 270 to see whether they're diverging or whatnot. There is a huge uh, difference between the RL10 and the RL270, and that's, I'm going to mark that off as a orange box right here so you can see the magnitude 
of that move. So this is how far the RL10 is from the RL270. Um, and then notice there was a time when that was a small, small move back here. So right now, Um, the dif the difference of opinion between short-term traders and long-term buy and holders is as great as it was at the last peak at the last peak of this market move at the end of the summer when it got to the peak of its performance the um, the difference between the RL10 and the RL270 was that what sh happened shortly after there was the collapse of price and the trader's price came back. So that's about as far as it has historically gotten in the last three years between the RL10 and the RL270 on the, um, on the monthly chart. If you look back, there was a time way back here when the traders and the RL270 long-term buy and holders agreed back here. This was in 2013. And then the traders have slowly been moving away. There was a, uh, notice this last divergence, and then it collapsed. And then it got back to that same divergence and collapsed. And then it made this divergence and then, uh, and then co collapsed. And now, right now, it's as great as it has ever been here and here. So when it's gotten this far away from the RL270, what I'm saying is on a monthly basis, I believe that it wouldn't take much to persuade those, those guys to join a mad rush to the downside. So what would be a standard 10% correction uh, if it collapsed from here? Well, it's at 300. So this is the size of a $30, $30 move would be simply, that's what a 10% correction would be. And that's right near this critical decision point. So a reversion to the Bollinger Band mean is just a simple 10% correction. And all the talking heads would simply say, well, that's normal. That happens three times a year. Well, it really hasn't, but that's what they'll tell you. And five out of six 10% corrections don't go any lower and reverse to the upside. And I will just tell you, if this thing lost 3% or 5%, and then people would be panicking, because that's what they're panicking at lately in the last five years, a 5% correction acts like panic. And then if it went to 10%, that would be, um, uh, it would sound like a catastrophe. So if it just got back to the Bollinger Band mean, that, however, in reality, that would be a 10% correction. Um, and then... Uh, we would expect a rebound from there. So I would still be bullish on this market if it lost 30 bucks from this price level. And I would be looking to be a buyer at any one of those red levels. If it got to the red line and then didn't collapse further, I would be looking to buy. That would be the channeling system on a monthly basis. So uh, until it gets below 265, I maintain a bullish perspective. Or if that... Um, MACD histogram went below the zero line, whichever one of those happens first, is what it would take for me to no longer be a bull. So there we are. Right now, the market is 8.5% above the 200-period uh, moving average. So as long as it's above that, we can still be confident that it's it will be seen as a bull market. So that's the size of a normal corrective move, a $30 loss in the S&P. And the long-term buy and holders who have been happily, who happily started buying this thing way back when it was at, um, uh, when the uh, RL10 and the RL270 were uh, in agreement. If you look down at the MACD histogram at that point, it was at the end of a fall, and instead of failing through the zero line, it rejoined and became the summer. So I really want you to see why I consider a fall that doesn't fail through the zero line is a sign to get long. 
So if you started your buying program inside this box, you were buying the market on this breakout in that white candle around 215. And then you never got out of that until it hit 295. So that was a $90 move on 210. That's a 45% gain from May of 2017 to Octo in an 18-month period, you made 50% in the S&P. That's a 30% annualized gain. Simply by looking at monthly signals and respecting the interpretation of MACD histogram for seasons, and then taking a look at the relationship between the RL10 and the RL270 to say how much is left and how far could it go. So we've seen the upper limit of how far it can stretch, and that's where we are, uh, like right now. The last time it collapsed was when it stretched that far from the RL270 to the RL10, and then it collapsed uh, $60.00. And then it gained those $60 back. So right now, the RL10 and the RL270 are at historically ex stretched extremes. And that's part of the reason why I cashed half my positions last Friday, so I could raise capital to take advantage of the gains that I see in hand that are at extremely stretched conditions. So that's my interpretation of what's going on in the monthly level. So I want you to imagine that was the conversation being held by... Uh, monthly adjustment portfolio managers for pension funds and big, big money. They're saying, hey, I really have enjoyed this run to all-time new highs, but we are at historically stretched conditions, and it would be a shame to let that go all the way back to the 200-day moving average. So I would expect some, I would expect to see hedging behavior halfway down the stack, and that actually equates to about 280. So a 5% sell-off would be 15 bucks, which would be 285, which is this red, this red line right here. I'm going to turn that to purple, and I'm going to say that is the 5% retracement um, that we ought to be mindful of. I, whoops, wrong one. So that's a 5% retracement at the northern skin of the dragon. So when I look at this, uh, I want you to see that if it fails below 292, yeah, that's a 3.5% sell-off, 3.5%. This first purple line is a 5% sell-off. This second purple line at the Bollinger Band mean is a 10% sell-off, and that would be a very important decision point for guys that were worried about more than a normal 10% correction. That would be a huge decision because now guys that were enjoying it, the move to 300 are going to cash at 270 in order to preserve their move from 215. So they're protecting 60, and they're going to give up 30 to protect 60. That's why that second purple line at 265 is the line in the sand for big money. And if it collapsed that far, we better be, we better be short. That would be enough of a move to take this from the fall all the way down to the zero line. How far could it move in one month? Well, in one month, it moved from 280 to uh, 235. That's a $50 loss in one month. So could it go from 300 to 250 in one month? It has twice in the last year. So it turns out that when you look at the worst months in the S&P, that was half of the worst quarter in the S&P. So when the S&P suffers and it collapses, it makes all of those losses in one bad month. So if you wait to see one bad month, you've already eaten half of the losses that you could expect in the worst quarter ever. So it's tough to wait that long and then decide to get out. So that's why hedging behavior I would expect to see at 292 because that's a 3% sell-off to protect against a 10% sell-off. And if 3% did, didn't get you out, there will be a lot getting out at 5%, which is the skin, the northern skin of the dragon, which is the buffer. So 
if you didn't get out at three and a half percent, you better get out at five percent. So that's what we see by those. I'm going to turn both of those purple just so that we recognize that that is a monthly sell signal. So now when we go down to the weekly and we start adding those lines, wherever we see purple, we say, oh, that's a big signal for the monthly guy. So I don't lose sight of that. So if I was just going to be a long-term buy and holder and looking to use swing trading techniques to help fine-tune my long-term positions, I might start with the monthly and then go to the weekly and just kind of stop there so I could reevaluate this on a weekly and a monthly basis and not get lost in the noise of daily and hourly charts. But if I'm just a position sizing guy looking at position trading on the weekends, once a week and once a month, that's the analysis I start with at the monthly level because that's still actionable. So your key numbers there are 3% sell-offs and 5% sell-offs are the early warnings. And then the 10% is the line in the sand. So if you were going to be more tactical than a 10% trailing stop, 3 and 5% become those logical points. And now we've tied them to, um, to those moments so that's the RLFF, and I've talked about support and resist. Now, next I want to talk about support and resistance. The belly of the dragon is key resistance, or I'm sorry, key support. I would treat the RL90 as um, a support level, and then the bottom of the monthly move as a support level. That's enough about the monthly. Any questions on the monthly from the team? Okay, so now we've uh, we've completed our monthly. Now I'm going to shift to the weekly. So now I'm going to start with the MACD histogram. I should I want you to notice, however, this yellow box represents the monthly high and monthly low that carried over from the last um, from the last uh, monthly review. So um, I'm going to just show that the month from right about there. So that's about five weeks. So that's, that yellow box is the high and low. So you can see the green line was a breakout of the monthly box. It's also going to be the breakout from the weekly box because they were both the same. And then the, the weekly low, I'm going to add a weekly trader might use that as their trigger. A break down below the weekly low, that's what, it, that's what that was. And then this purple line was a, was a monthly, three, that was the 3% sell-off. And here was the 5% sell-off, and this was the monthly. So each one of those is a reason you, could, you wouldn't be surprised if a weekly guy decided to cash his position. Instead of buying more, he was selling to protect all the gains that he had made on this run up to 300. So if it broke through those, then you might say the next it's going to collapse to the next support level and the next support level. Each one of those acts like a tripwire for additional selling or as a place where we might see a, a turning point. So that's, that's how we're going to build this out. So I start now with MACD histogram. I noticed that we, are, we were in the summer to about this point, and then for about the last six weeks, we have been in the fall, and we're still in the fall. So I'm going to make that larger. So I want you to notice that we have just entered this this is a Bollinger Band on the MACD histogram itself. So we are still early in the fall. And th th on the weekly basis, this tells me that psychology is protect the gains that you made from here all the way up through the summer and have been hanging on in the fall. But there is even the weekly guys are being concerned about protecting these profits. Look, we had, we had a doji. And now we're going to come back. We had a, a, a swing high. It sold off to the Bollinger Band main. It found support of the Bollinger Band, had a big response that ended in a doji. How did they vote? They went to the upside and went from 290 to 300. That's another 3% leg up. And uh, it still closed well. So there's still more room to the upside. And I would reinforce that. I still like that green line add on momentum until proven otherwise that's what it's doing but the downside move for the weekly guy is he's going to give it a five dollar stop 
And then his next decision point is probably the two-week low is also uh, where we saw the 5% sell-off, the monthly low. So there's no additional ones in there. I'm going to add a PSAR stop. And um, a Z minus two stop or Z minus one, that's where it falls out of the river. But we already knew that was going to be a big decision point. If it breaks the 10% and fails, I would then add another second position at 265. So we're in the fall. It means be cautiously optimistic to the upside, but be ready with your exit signals on the downside. So we're going to see a lot of this as we go because the upside is, well, it's just not failing. It's continuing to just buy momentum, and we have money in hand. So just we're, so what we're really doing is watching the other side of the trade. Every one of those red lines is a place where I'm prepared to be going short intraday or on daily charts and looking for those symbols that do well when the market is troublesome. Pinch and stretch, I'm, I'm gonna, I have to back out here a little bit so I can see all the Bollinger Bands and see what they're doing. The Bollinger Bands are expanding, so this is a market on a weekly basis that is continuing to grow and go. So it's adding juice in that direction. So it hasn't started to roll over yet. So it's not pinching, it is expanding, it is stretching. Uh, RLCO patterns, uh, what I'm noticing uh, lately was I saw the belly of the dragon here. Now I'm going to put a support level in at the belly of the dragon and say that would be a support level. The hump of the dragon uh, is right here. So that's actually a support level. Uh, but we made a high. It came down and found support of the Bollinger Band mean. So this continuation path, that was a universal entry and then a breakout from the dragon. So this is a P4, a pocket entry is still going long. That's what I see from RLCO. The RLFF, um, the biggest previous excursion, and I'm going to use this orange, I'm going to use an orange box again. Let's, let's make it a different color so we can see. I'm going to use a green box for this excursion. Um, the RL270 is this big, thick purple line. The last big excursion was here. That's how far the weekly RL10 got from the RL270. On the downside, it actually got a little bit further. When it got that far, it then reverted back to here where it, it rejoined, and then it went to the upside, and the furthest it got was here. and then it failed. That's actually significant because before when it was young and strong, that first leg up, it got a strong, it got a big move down and then it got half a move to the far side. It came back and found support and then it stretched to the upside again. It's right at a level where the last time it got that far, they started preserving their profits. So if this fails, so here's what that means. If it fails through the weekly low, it would not surprise me to see them want to preserve that. So that, I think, is a decision point for the guy using weekly charts. That's where selling is going to begin at 296. So that's only a $4 stop. $4 on 300 is about one and a third percent. That's where they, we're going to see, that's how vulnerable this thing is to downside pressure. Support and resistance, we've kind of covered that with the, um, the, uh, um, the low of the week, the two-week low, the um, the RL270, that looks good. That's everything I want to say that, about that one. So now I'm going to shift. Let, let me first. Yeah, so uh, let the, the question was asked, uh, is this tr in trending behavior? And the answer is yes, because price, the RL10 and the RL30, are out of the river. Now notice the RL30 is long and strong and the 10 came down and found support at the edge of the river and came out of the river here. So this is still, that's the argument to the upside. Well, there's still more, more momentum here. I've been worried about the downside, but the upside is, hey, the market's at an all-time high. 
The S&P is better than the rest of the world by far. They closed at the highest high ever on the weekend and were willing to hold it overnight. And there's range expansion last week. It, it did nothing but move up. That was all signal. Notice the second week ago, there was a long tail and then it recovered and went up. But last week, they got stronger because it's all signal to the upside. So there's guys that believe in this, all U.S. This is America. And there's no other place to put your equity money. Asia, emerging markets, Europe are all terrible. Gold is already overextended. The only other place you can go is treasuries. So if this fails, that's where it's going to go. But what else is your equity choice? There isn't one. So if you want exposure to equities, you, it's, you're buying the U.S., America, baby. That's the argument to the upside. You know, have no fear, you know. Uh, so I'm going to take care of the other side of the trade by looking at the triggers to the downside with measured moves. But if there's any momentum, I'm on board. I will be the second mouse. Go ahead, lead on. I'll follow up and be the second mouse. Did I answer that question? Another one? Okay, what's the question? Yeah, so one of the things we can observe here was during this long, orderly, quiet move, all it did was get above the zero line right about here, actually even earlier than that. It came out of the summer, I mean, it came out of the spring all the way back here. This is where on the weekly basis that long summer started right about here, and it went all the way through. It tested right here on that little pullback, and then it voted to the upside so summer that leads to fall and doesn't cross a zero line and resumes, that's a re-entry or a second or third position. That's what I mean, act, go. And then you'll notice the same thing that happened later. It got to an extreme summer and went into the fall, briefly touched the zero line. So you may have gotten out in this region, but then when the summer resumed, it got you long and strong again. And then the fall, this was the, this signal right here, notice, when it crossed the zero line and didn't recover, you had plenty of time to respond to avoid the pain of that sell-off. And then right in here was where that spring began, and that got you interested in rejoining uh, the, the play right here. And if we zoom in on that, I want you to notice, what do you have on a weekly chart right here? You had a recovery to the Z minus 3, a 1, 2, 3 entry, or you might have waited this long for an RLXD entry, and you get an OWL entry right here because you had an unambiguous move, an RLCO outside the river, RLXD, the dragon rolls up, the 30 rolls up, and this is an OWL entry right, at this, uh, right in this region uh, right here. Ah, come on. you would have had an owl entry at this yellow dot right um, right in here. And then if you use the bottom of the dragon as your stop, you never got out. So the owl entry on a weekly basis, money. And then a winter becomes the spring. You're looking for owls and you use the bottom of the dragon's belly. Or I would also accept the PSR, but the bottom of the dragon's belly is my execution stop. And I'll use 2ATR as my position stop. And then you you were in at 280 and you got a 8% move to the swing high up here. And if this RLXD got you out, that RLXD got you back in and you got a 5% move up. So now looking at the relationship between the MACD and then the RLCO patterns on a weekly basis is money for swing traders. So pay attention to those signals at that level. So now you can see the combination of monthly and weekly gives you insights into how to manage more relaxed positions with swing trade money and position trading money. Then you can refine that with intraday technique, as we'll see when we get to daily. Any other questions on the weekly? So cautiously optimistic because we're in the fall and we've identified the support and resistance triggers that would get us out now we have to make we would have to make decisions about would we go short or is that just where we would cover 
So uh, I'll let you suffer through that decision. When it comes to actioning, what we're doing now is setting the conditions for understanding. Okay, so that was the, uh, that yellow box again was the monthly high and low. I'm going to make the green box, just so that we can see it, the weekly high and low. Oops, so that stands out to us. Sorry, right there. Okay. So the yellow box then, we'll remember, is the monthly range. The green box is the weekly range. So now I'm going to drill down to the daily. And now we can, we're going to have to see in context what those prices look like. So the, on the daily chart, you can see we're at the top of the weekly range and the top of the monthly range. And so the monthly guys don't even sell till it gets down to here. And the weekly guys really begin their selling program here. Um, the daily guys are looking here. Maybe the belly of the dragon. The RL270 is probably, we're going to refine that by just going there. This monthly, or this PSAR and this red line, I'm just going to adjust that to the PSAR. Um, this one is also the Bollinger Band mean. So I feel like we've identified, what i got to add to this now is the daily, daily support level is right about there. That green line to the upside is still, still good to go. I might look at adding that position right about there. All right, so um, I might add a breakout of the from the river. That's for the Z minus one breakdown just before the 10%. So this was the 5% sell-off. That was the 10% sell-off. You can see, I want to go in the sequence now. Um, on the daily chart, looking at MACD histogram, uh, we were in summer till the fall right about here, and then we crossed on Thursday into back into the summer. So the daily guys voted north and they said, the daily guys, off we go long and strong. And they carried the day. So it's just beginning the summer on the daily. So on the basis of MACD histogram, you should be buying any upward momentum. Love it. Uh, pinch and stretch. You can see that the it's starting to pinch a little bit on the uh, Z3 line. It's starting to converge. Um, the river is at normal width. Mm, so it's starting to pinch. That means, wh what that means is this, this sell-off that happened in this region right here, this sell-off between here to here, uh, was enough to give people some pause to make it start uh, coming back. So they, I think they look at this as leg one from here to here. That's leg one. This is leg two. So I hope that the next move up would be this big. So now I'm going to estimate the next excursion to the upside. I just put these in as placeholders. That would be, a, if it breaks beyond the Z3, that, that entry at 310 turns out to have been a Z3 breakout to the upside. It went into irrational exuberance. So now I actually want to project how far above this could move. So the biggest move from the Z, uh, uh, from the RL270 to the RL10, I'm going to make that a dark blue. So this was the biggest move away from the RL270 that we've seen in the past. Do you guys see that? Check. Even when it came back down to the downside, it, it just touched the 270, went briefly below it, and then went back across. Now, when we see that, what we would do is let's take the last move above, and now the top of that box is how far it could go, and it actually got that far and then collapsed. So now let's see where we are. The last time price collapsed, it was almost that same height 
and then it pulled back and then collapsed down to here and then it resumed and right now price is at the net that's the limit of the expansion that we've seen the last time so in terms of RLFF excursion that's how far the traders were able to move it the last time before the sell-off occurred so I'm not surprised if they if they lose their conviction early they've got to show strength early and go but if they don't see it they're going to start thinking ah, nothing to see here then the weekly and the monthly guys that are preserving are going to take over and this thing could collapse big on Monday it's already at the furthest range excursion that, as we've seen in the past in the last uh, six months even at the peak of that last sell-off uh, this is how far it collapsed last time in a matter of about 10 days it collapsed that far from when the RL10 and the RL270 were in agreement 10 days later it had moved a blue box away so it could move from here to the bottom of that blue stack in 10 days so if this turned out to be a horrible month that horrible month would start with a horrible 10 day period where it could go from 300 to 260 in 10 days that is a 40 dollar loss on 300 which is a 12 percent loss in two weeks that's a six to eight percent loss in one week so it could easily lose five percent next week and we would not not easily but we would not be surprised if it did that because that's that's what it did twice within the last six months is a five percent loss in a hurry so if we weren't prepared for that then we might absorb all that or we might miss the opportunity but if you take a look at this close up you realize that we have a lot of decision points where we could be convinced um, to get short or to cover that all right so that's the magnitude of the potential loss on a 10-day period just looking at the 10-day just looking at daily charts so that's actually a move from the RL 10 down to the 270 and then another excursion past that if we just saw those last two sell-offs manifested now that's what that would look like and you can see all of the bias to get short in here by those higher time frames that are concerned about preserving profits of this abnormally large move that's the kind of tripwire the momentum selling that can feed into a panic run just to get to a five or a ten percent correction all nobody wants to eat a five or ten percent correction because they got to tell their clients yeah we ate all of that but don't worry it'll it it usually come back it usually comes back and they're saying dude I just lost all those gains I was so happy about I'm not happy anymore at a 10% gain the hedge fund guys are pulling their money out of the hedge fund you you're supposed to protect me against that how do they pr they protect against a 10% loss by giving you 3% wiggle room and starting their selling program so they're gonna eat 3% in order to, but they'll sell to protect against the 10% sell-off so they're going to give you one and protect two. So that's why a 3% sell-off, which is $10, is two ninety. That's the bottom of this green box. At the bottom of that green box, the upside joy is over, and 80% of the pro money managers are going to pound this thing to the downside. Guys are going to be selling, and other guys are going to be aggressively pushing it to try to chase them out of their position. It's not till it gets down to 260 when the big money guys start coming on board. So that's the case for the downside. 